What's been going on here is an incredible cover story. Councilmember Burke. You've been had. I'm speaking on behalf of the taxpayers of District 1. You went for a ride. You got taken. I have a resolution 11-248 to provide remedy for this council of integrity. If this council wants to act with integrity, you have a resolution before you that says start the process over. You said you won't add a penny more to your, to your proposal. Uh, $234 million is pretty important to my district. Very important. We got flooding issues, we got sewer rates going up, and I think that going to battle for $234 million is worth a resolution to pass to make a oh, statement. I, I believe mistakes were made in this procurement process. That happens, uh, but then it's very hard to admit that mistakes were made. So you I think didn't that's, get, you that's didn't the thrust of what's going you on. You didn't here. get a 48-hour chance, did you? No. So when you, wanted, when you brought up Phoenix, you were given an opportunity, and you wound up winning the award, and Phoenix, the taxpayer, saved money. Yes. In this instance of what did not go before DCCA is that you wanted to tell DCCA and then the appeal on the DCCA, you wanted to say, look, I wasn't given a 48-hour opportunity to the HRS that you showed, but you couldn't argue that point. That's, is that correct? I, again, I, we, we, it, there was a ruling for summary motion. The city won that, and I wasn't able to say anything. To use a football analogy, Councilman Tom Berg wants a replay on rail. If the referee made a bad call on the field, it's our job to review this. It's our job to oversee that maybe they got the call wrong. He says Bombardier Transportation got robbed. Their bid is $234 million less, and they would have built the rail cars in Hawaii and created 150 local jobs. But they were disqualified. And when asked why, the city's attorney said they can't talk about it even though it's all part of the public process. And it was the city's attorneys versus Bombardier, with both testifying the other is wrong. Bombardier says its bid was the lowest by $234 million, but their offer was disqualified because they wanted a cap on liability. Bombardier says the contract language is flawed and the city does not understand the liability law. The city basically asked for a contract for apples and Bombardier proposed oranges. This whole issue of, of liability is totally misunderstood but stood by the city. Really what's been going on here is an incredible cover story. Bombardier's proposal had proposed a, a different uh, cap on liability. They never did that. They played gotcha, we gotcha, you're out. It's wrong. Essentially the city contract that was offered in the RFP provided that there would be a limit on liability, direct liability to the city but that the liability for indemnification, so for third-party claims that may be brought against the city, would not be subject to that limitation. You know, we've always felt that the city, um, the city representatives, their attorneys, never really understood the liability issue. That's been confirmed for me today. Beyond doubt, they don't understand it. And, and the language that Bombardier proposed would del deleted that exclusion and thus would have applied that overall liability cap. So that is totally false what you heard today. We never requested a cap on third party claims. It's outrageous that the city would even think that that's part of this, uh, part of this proposal. It does not include any claims on third party. That's any outside mistake, the cap. Error or ambiguity is identified by the priority listed offerer at any time during the process. In any of the documents supplied by the city, we have a duty to notify the city of the corrected, the needed correction. It's an obligation that a contractor point out faulty language, something wrong. And that's what we were trying to do over and over. So basically, the way that the language read is we're giving you this cap on liability at 100% of contract value. But then in the next paragraph, oh, by the way, everything is excluded from the cap. That's faulty language. It's drafting language. It's a mistake. What we find now is now that this has become an issue uh, after the fact and we were improperly disqualified on this point, now there's a cover story to say, we meant to exclude everything from the cap. We gave you the cap, yes, but we also meant to exclude everything from the cap. That is ridiculous. As I, you know, as I said, you can't compare an Apple's proposal to an Orange's proposal. Everybody has to be on the same, the same terms and conditions. Look at B. The proposal, after any opportunity has passed for modification or clarification, fails to meet the announced requirements of the agency. What is this saying? It's saying that if there's some sentence in this 14-volume proposal, tens of thousands of sentences that we wrote, 
If there's some sentence that the city finds objectionable or thinks is a, an exception or something wrong, they are given the opportunity by the Horace to come back to us and say, you know, we don't like this sentence. You have 48 hours to remove it. This is very normal, and it's right in the code. They never did that. They played gotcha, we gotcha, you're out. It's wrong. If you were indeed to fill out the form of condition and made it applicable like the others, your price would then go up. You've just refuted that today, that if you said, if I'm treated the same as everyone else here, I'm not adding a penny to this proposal. And I'm telling you now, we would not increase the price at all uh, for this issue. You know, we didn't want to go and, and make this into a claim. It turns out that Sumitomo dropped this issue, okay, in the final BAFO. And, and we asked ourselves why they actually had it as a clarification, just like we did in the initial proposal. They dropped it in the final proposal, and we asked ourselves, why did they do that? The only thing we could think of is they figured, well, it's faulty language, it's unenforceable, and down the line, if this issue ever comes up, we'll claim, we'll make a big, we'll fight it, we'll make a claim out of it. Bombardier does not operate like that. We did not want to do that. We didn't want to make these anti-rail critics right, that you're going to get all these claims on this project and the costs are going to escalate. We wanted clarity Here's now. Here's the we first sign of trouble. Uh, March 21st, when the award was made to Ansaldo, the mayor's office put out a press release. Ansaldo was selected as the winning bidder for the $574 million core systems contract. False. It's not $574 million. The deception started right there, and I'll explain to you why. Because it completely ignored the operations and maintenance scope. Okay, it's a misrepresentation of what this whole contract was about. They were boasting about a 27 percent uh, reduction under, the, under their estimate. And, and maybe that's why they only revealed the, uh, the design build part and left out the O&M part. I don't know. As a matter of fact, our representatives were in the room that day and, and heard city representatives say that the O&M would be negotiated later. You can't do that under a single DBOM contract. O&M is a uh, fixed price part of the proposal. It's all together. There's no negotiation later to kind of separate that. See, the, the press release, when it talked about $574 million, made it seem that Bombardier was a high bidder uh, in, in the information that was released to the press, because that was just the first part of the contract. When you add in the, uh, the, all of the O&M components, all of a sudden the picture changes. And in fact, Bombardier had the lowest total price of all three bidders. Uh, the example from the Sumitomo uh, uh, price form for O&M you can see the prices for each year of operation as well as the total. Someone redacted the Ansaldo form, even taking out the heading, so you really couldn't figure out, you know, what, what period of time, what, what part of the contract is that $339 million for. It was, it was covered up. So we had to go and file government, uh, uh, request for government records, and that's when we finally got the numbers. And I'll give you an example of that. We've actually confronted this issue once before. We did a, we did a proposal for the city of Phoenix. And, and by the way, Hawaii procurement law is modeled after Arizona procurement law. Okay, so this is relevant. In 2009, we did a proposal for the city of Phoenix. <coughs> they liked our proposal, but they had a problem with something we wrote in the proposal. And you can read in this letter. The city of Phoenix has received Bombardier's final proposal. The proposal includes conditions that Phoenix previously rejected. Now, we dispute that we had a condition, but they felt like we had a condition. So what did Phoenix do? You have until 5 p.m. on Wednesday, February 11th, to remedy this, to withdraw that condition. This is the way the process is supposed to work. We did that. We're building the project right now. The city got the best deal. That's the way the procurement code was meant to be and used. The city did not do that here. In the, in the Hawaii administrative rules, which I have here, there's requirements for discussions. And this is really what our, what our uh, court case was based on. If the city decides to have discussions, which they did, here is the guidelines for having discussions. And you see the very first point. The, one of the main purposes for having discussions is to devise the priority listed officers, 
offerers of weaknesses, significant weaknesses or deficiencies in their proposal. And they did that, they did that about the doors on the car, the windows on the car. You would think an item that was going to disqualify us would be part of the discussions, but it was not. I was so shocked on March 21st when I was disqualified because it was never discussed that that would disqualify our proposal. So they did not follow the requirements for discussions. So the city points to this question that was asked about the liability issue before the BAFO in addendum number 44, question number 67. Now one of the little tricks that's made is in the DCC hearing, DCCA hearing and in court, the attorneys for the city make it sound like we asked this question. Sumitomo asked this question. That's in the public record. This is Sumitomo's question. So they made a comment about having an impact on pricing. That was used against us to make it seem like somehow this liability clarification was being used by us to, manip to come up with a lower price. This was not our question. There's no way to calculate a price on, on going above a cap on liability. We have absolutely, price had nothing to do with this issue for us. But if you look at this question that Sumitomo asked, okay, look at this question. They say, please confirm or clarify that the city does not intend to render the cap meaningless and provide a way to circumvent it by excluding everything. I'm paraphrasing, but that's what the first point says. Sumitomo asked the city, please confirm or clarify. All the city had to do is say confirmed, and we would have all gotten it, okay? Or they could have said, no, it's a mistake, we'll fix the language. What do they say? No change. And this is what the city points to as being unambiguous about the issue, no change. And we were supposed to read into that and, and figure out, oh yeah, they really mean to circumvent a cap. What we read into that is that they still didn't understand the issue. All they had to do is say, we really mean to circumvent the cap. As ridiculous as it was, we would have had to deal with it. Now they're saying that, we'll, we'll, we'll drop the clarification if that's really what's going to disqualify us. And we'll have to deal with it later. It's not our preference to do that. But if that's the rules of the game, we'll do it. No change. We were supposed to figure out they really meant to circumvent the cap. It, it's ridiculous. You mentioned evidentiary. You mentioned something of when you came before this process with DCCA, that what you just showed this council and the public, and I hope everybody watching TV paid attention to what you said. The majority of what you exposed here today and exhibited was not allowable before the DCCA hearing. Is that correct? I was not allowed to say a word. The bottom line about this core systems contract selection is that the city and heart staff either simply did not understand the Hawaii procurement code, which I believe is true, or, or they felt that they could make any decision that they wanted. And both DCCA and, and the courts appeared to give broad deference to the city in this regard. But I question whether this is really in the best interest of the city and the taxpayers. Our proposal was improperly disqualified due to faulty RFP language that the city failed to understand. We were never afforded meaningful discussions to, to try to remedy this situation. And even if the city truly believed that uh, Bombardier submitted a qualified proposal, it failed to allow Bombardier to address this issue as provided for in the HARS and thereby afford itself of accepting the highest scoring solution with the lowest price, which clearly would have been in the best interest of the taxpayers. And that's what the whole solicitation process is about. I urge the city to consider this resolution and exercise its budget authority over HART to remedy this situation. There is time to get this right and regain the trust of the public. According to Hart, a full funding grant agreement from the Fed, federal government is now not expected until September or October of 2012. And I know that this council has passed a bond measure for the project to leverage your GET funds, but I don't believe council wanted to spend local money until they received the federal full funding grant agreement. So you're not really going to get the substantial amount of money going into this project until next September at the earliest. There's more than enough time to get this core systems contract right. This contract is vital to the whole success of the project. And I, I, I ask for your consideration of this matter. 
Thank you. Thank Any you. questions for Mr. Robbins? I could understand Bombardier saying, I've got this on the table to the end of October. You want to jump on it? Take it. We're going to allow and watch that if this resolution, which is really a symbolic resolution, it doesn't, it doesn't say anything. It's not a legal document that Bombardier is going to take into court. It's really telling the mayor to get his act together. This is really all this does. It's just telling the mayor, do you want to be a mayor who's going to save $234 million? Do you want to be a mayor that wants to provide and infuse jobs on this project or give the jobs to California? Do you, mayor, want to take a position on behalf of the taxpayer? Do you, mayor, want to do something that the DCCA would not take into account? Being a, being a, a, a prosecuting attorney, uh, this, this mayor of ours knows the legal wranglings, and he has an opportunity to use his expertise, use his background, use his ability of that uh, executive position to take this lead. Right now, I can understand the comments that this is not in the domain or purview of the council that we do not take sides. We're not taking sides. This doesn't say anything in this resolution one over the other. It doesn't do any of that. It doesn't take a side. All this resolution does is say, on behalf of the taxpayer, we've been apprised that we could save money. Please, Mr. Mayor, take action and save us money. That's all this does. There's no spin in this language. None. So deferral will, in essence, when I hear the vote cast, I will hear the toilet flush. And I will watch $234 million go down the drain. And it seems to me that each time I look at these communications, someone who's an expert in the field is trying to guide you folks, trying to help you out, trying to help save us money, trying to create us jobs. And it seems that every point in time through the six inches is the city says, I don't want the best bang for our dollar. I don't want to create local jobs. I want to make sure we give it to one of the worst companies that is in this business. When Ansaldo uh, in California was found that they could not build the rail cars according to spec, and it was a deficient, defective product, do the taxpayers of California pay for that poor quality of work, or was that condition applicable whereby we're trying to duplicate the same protection for the taxpayer. So in other words, we found that Ansaldo is, is not up to par, failed to meet the scope. Who ate the cost for that deficiency? The taxpayer in California, or does that conditional use of protection of a cap, of a liability with or without such cap, but the liability of indemnification, how does that compare between apples and oranges in this instance. So I'm trying to learn and protect our taxpayers in Honolulu on this scenario. Can you comment on that scenario? Do you have any, any knowledge of, of, of what transpired with this contract uh, for Insaldo in California and how that pans out for us here in, in, in Hawaii? Well, uh, Council Member, I'm not aware of the specific facts of the Los Angeles contract. I understand that there was a payment of liquidated damages from Ansaldo to Los Angeles. I'm looking at $234 million being flushed down the toilet, and we're getting a, a, a contractor who doesn't really know how to build rail cars. I at the DCCA hearing, uh, you, you know, we saw the ruling from the hearings officer, and he, he had this theory that he used in his, uh, in his decision that somehow we were trying to obtain a lower price. There was absolutely zero evidence for him to come to that conclusion. I think probably what happened is he saw that Sumitomo question that I have in your packet there, because they made a reference to price, and it, it seemed to, he was led to believe, I believe, that that was our question. So somehow we were trying to game the system. It's zero evidence of that, and I'm telling you now, we would not increase the price at all uh, for this issue. Have you